Should you book an ocean view cabin or spend a little bit more to get a balcony room? I've got the reasons why you should or shouldn't up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RealCaribbeanBlog.com. There are a number of different types of cabins that you can book on any Real Caribbean cruise ship, and there's really something that fits most budgets and preferences. Of course, balcony rooms are probably the most prevalent cabin type and very popular, but for those who don't think they need a balcony as they just won't spend enough time on it, an ocean view, otherwise known as an outside view stateroom, provides natural light and views at a lower price. So which should you book? Which is best for you? I've got the pros and cons about what you should consider if it's worth it to move up to a balcony. It's also important to note that when we're considering both ocean view and balcony rooms, there isn't a right or wrong answer. I can't tell everybody watching this video, you should book one or the other. This is gonna come down to you and your preferences, your budget, and what you're looking for out of your cruise. So I wanted to provide some factors, some ideas to think about when selecting either an ocean view versus a balcony cabin. Let's start off with the number one reason most people consider one or the other, and that is price. Price, of course, is an important consideration because money makes the world go around. And at the end of the day, no matter what you want, your budget is going to determine what you can actually afford, right? And travelers can get more out of their budget by making different choices out of it. Ocean view and balcony rooms do vary in price depending on the ship and sailing. But generally speaking, a standard ocean view room is going to cost you less than one with a balcony. The cost gap varies from ship to ship and sailing to sailing. For some itineraries, it could be as small as maybe $50 a person. For others, it could be $500 a person. It really does run the gamut. For a family of four, that can add up to a lot of money, and the money saved on not upgrading to balcony can be used on something else, like maybe an awesome shore excursion, specialty dining, or drink packages. When you're looking at this price gap, what you want to look at is also the nightly price, not just the total price. Nearly everyone that books a real Caribbean cruise is on some kind of a budget, so even if you want to book a balcony room, it may not be financially viable. So it's important to at least consider the options and make sure one of them is going to be the best choice for you, especially when you look at the total vacation cost. Next up is room size. Not all cabins are created equal. Balcony stateroom's are slightly larger than those with an ocean view, but again, differ between the ships. So it depends on which class ships you're going on. It's always a good idea to have a look at the ship's deck plans to review room features and location prior to booking anything. As an example, on Symphony of the Seas, most ocean view rooms are 179 square feet, whereas a standard balcony cabin is 182 square feet plus 50 square feet of balcony space. Not a huge amount of difference in the actual room size, but by contrast, Adventure of the Seas, which is a Voyager class ship, has a standard ocean view room is about 161 square feet, and a balcony is 198 square feet plus 46 square feet of balcony space. That's a little bit more difference in size. Now, if you think that a balcony room is a runaway win in terms of size, not necessarily. You might want to consider family ocean view cabins. On many Royal Caribbean ships, there are family ocean view rooms, which are usually located at the very front or the very rear of the ship that offer a ton of living space meant to be shared by families of four or more guests. These rooms have not only portholes, but can include an extra bathroom and separate sleeping area for the kids. These family ocean view rooms are a great alternative to a suite or even two connecting rooms provided you can snag one before they get booked up. Of course, one major difference between a balcony and an ocean view room is, well, a balcony room has a balcony, and a standard balcony will have two chairs and a table outside. There are partitions that can separate guests from their neighbors, and some have obstructed views by a portion of a lifeboat equipment or some other part of the ship. Some people really see a lot of value in having a balcony. With Royal Caribbean offering free continental breakfast room service, cruisers can savor a more relaxing start to their morning on their balcony or enjoy the fresh sea air breezes flowing through the cabin. The itinerary is also worth considering. How much time will you relax on your balcony may vary depending on whether you're sailing in the Caribbean or traveling north on a voyage to Alaska, where even in the summer, the temperatures may only reach maybe the low 60s. Some trips like the Mediterranean may only have one sea day, providing much less opportunity to use a balcony. And then of course, there's room availability. Ocean view cabins just aren't as plentiful as those with balconies on most cruise ships. On Symphony of the Seas, only 6% of cabins are ocean view, whereas 65% have balconies, not including suites. Adventure of the Seas has more, with ocean views making up 14% of the total rooms. A little more choice makes it a little easier to get. There are also a few larger ocean view rooms, such as the ultra spacious ocean view, which has 328 square feet and sleeps six people, a great option for a larger family not wanting to get two cabins. There are also a number of accessible ocean view rooms. 
no matter which type of room you book, location is going to be huge. It's a key factor in choosing any cabin out there. Balcony rooms are located throughout the ship. Some people have strong preferences about location, preferring midship or lower level decks, especially for those who maybe suffer from seasickness. Ocean view rooms don't necessarily have the same selection. On the Symphony of the Seas, as an example, most of these ocean view cabins are concentrated in the bow or the front of the ship, especially on the lower decks. The new Odyssey of the Seas has ocean view cabins on various decks, providing more options for location. Given the limited number of ocean view cabins on cruises, you're more likely to get the more desired location with a balcony. The next factor to consider is, of course, cruise length. The duration of your cruise can be a major factor in deciding which category makes more sense. The difference in prices between ocean view and balcony can be more significant on longer cruises. If you want to splurge for a balcony, a shorter cruise with savings of less than $50 per person might be the time to try it and then maybe assess the value for yourself. For a longer cruise of seven nights or more, guests will have more time to spend on their balcony. However, the cost differential will be higher. Look for deals on repositioning cruises with great deals on all cabins, including balconies, because they're harder to fill. So which cabin should you get? Whether or not it's worth it for you and your traveling party to pay more for a balcony really depends on your preferences, budget, and how much time you'll be spending in your room and use your balcony. If you like having extra space with the views, balcony rooms score points. And if you don't get to travel very often and want to experience a little extra and treat yourself, it can be a really good way to go. Sitting on a balcony with a peaceful ocean view can be a great opportunity to de-stress and recharge on vacation. But for those that want to maximize their budget and maybe travel more, the savings from an ocean view room can be put to use elsewhere. There are plenty of public spaces on board to relax and enjoy the sea air. And if you have a busy port intensive itinerary, a lack of a balcony may not be missed because you're just not going to be out there. So you may be wondering what I would do. And in my family, balcony rooms make a lot more sense for the extra space, private balcony, and ambiance, provided the price is right. We have a budget for every cruise we take, and the price difference between a balcony and an interior room is often a major deciding factor. There's no question that when we have a balcony room booked, we spend more time in there than we have an inside room because we're paying for it. So we make a conscious decision, we're going to go spend more time on the balcony. I've got nothing against booking an interior room, and if it's the difference between going on a cruise or not, I'll gladly book an interior stateroom. A balcony is great, but not worth breaking the bank for either. Let me know in the comments what you think of, of an ocean view versus a balcony, which one to get. At the end of the day, there's different considerations, and I go back and forth on which one makes more sense. But depending on the price and what I'm looking for out of the cruise, and maybe my family's with me or not, that can make a major decision. I'm looking forward to reading in the comments what you think about there. While you're below this video, hit the like button. It really helps us out if you hit that like button. Also, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and turn on your notifications. That's that little bell icon next to the subscribe button. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. And by the way, subscribing is totally free, so don't worry about it costing you any kind of money. Thanks for watching. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.